Fighting wins, hard times done changed, and I can't be saving now. You know this all the night. I know you're thinking this life is really amazing. I know this all the night. Look at all the nonsense I've been through. So called beef with you know who? Did it myself. Why don't you? Why didn't you do this all the night? Don't expect help when it all fall through. Everyone to tell you it's all on you. Fight or run. What you gonna do? Today we are going to go through the new distributor orientation program. As, in, as leaders, you have already noticed that our business is not only about bringing a lot of people. As leaders, you already know that some of you already have a very strong left leg and a very strong right leg. Some of you already have so many people in your team. Am I right or am I right? But you find that somehow... Uh, probably the size of the team is not a representative to how much money you are making. Am I right? It's also very common for someone to say, oh, I was making money. I was making X amount of money, but today my money kind of reduced. Am I right? Or oh, one day I was giving a, a prize, I was making one million shillings per, per, per what? Per week, per day, per whatever it is, somehow my money is not doing very well. Am I right? Then some of you are probably... Uh, could also testify to this, that I bring a lot of people into the business. Sponsoring is not my problem. The problem is my people don't become active. How many of us say my people are not active? You know what I'm talking about. You find that the rate of activity is less. Or you bring people and many of them are less. So that is uh, the difference, really, really the difference between the networkers, the professional networkers who make it very big. And today... They are chilling on the beaches of, of the world. How many of us want to chill on the beaches of the world? They are having holiday with their children. They are having, you know, time with, with their wives. They are having time to uh, manage many other things. It, those people have understood the art of a new distributor orientation. Because one person in network marketing can be the biggest game changer. You know, people come to me and they ask me, excuse me, because give how have you been able to have so many leaders? You know, you seem to have a nice peak of leaders. Then I look at them and I probably want to even laugh at them. Now, really, I've, I make very good money, I believe. But most of my money, in fact, our 95%, maybe not 95, 98% of the money I make in a month comes from only six legs. Duncan, Sydney, Tuliatemba, Jimmy Cheyne, uh, uh, um, Kasimba Godfrey, and Demi Yanyamai. Of course, in the, in the Unilever bonus, in that particular line. Are we together with their downlines? I get what I'm telling you. This is where most of my money comes from. Now, when I tell you that, it means that one individual person that joins in your team, how many individuals? One. One individual person who joins your team, if they become a leader, wow, they could be the biggest game changers. I read somewhere and said that the key to the 99 is the what? Is the one. Care for one person very well. They are going to give you a big genealogy. I cannot imagine how many people are under Nicholas Uriatemba. I cannot imagine how many people are under Yiga Sidney Paul. I, get, I cannot imagine how many people are under uh, 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 Duncan. Are you getting what I'm telling you? One person. Let them join the business. Train them well. Support them well. And then you're going to be able to make crazy money. How many of us are ready for crazy money? So before I take you through our NDO program, I was reading this book, GoPro, by, 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 uh, by, by Eric Quarry. And he, I was you know, doing a bit of research about how we can improve our NDO system because as the visionary team, let us clap for ourselves, visionaries. As the visionary team, we have really managed to become the biggest team in Africa. And, you know, very soon, we are now going to become the biggest team in the world. How many of us would want that? I'm very sure about that. Now, of course, we have been able to have a beautiful system for the script trainings. You know, our sales system is very unmatched. We have a beautiful system. That sales system 
it is, a, it is probably the biggest game changer we have been able to have. Anyone who is uh, not um, using the cell system, encourage you to use it. The cell system is so simple and yet very duplicable that here in Kampala at Aruna Towers we can do it. At the same time, people in Kabale are doing it. At the same time, Kenyans are doing it. At the same time, Tanzanians are doing it. Are you together? A person who is um, uh, full-time, probably you normally do your cell in the morning. But a cell which can be done at 8 a.m. can also be done at 8 what? p.m. Are you getting what I'm telling you? A cell is so unique that even when new people have joined, they can be able to train themselves using the cell. Is that a good system or good system? That's why I normally encourage us as leaders, when you go to, I don't know, Sebugara was in Arua the other day, or you go to Malawi, or you go to those countries, and you, you focus on doing one-on-ones. Oh, God, you're good, good at one-on-ones. You do one-on-ones, beautiful. You do super trainings, beautiful. You do OPPs, beautiful. But when you leave that place, what system have you left them that while you are not around, they can be able to follow it? That's why I normally encourage us when we, as leaders, when you go as guest speakers to places like uh, several places, don't uh, um, focus on the powerful clothes you're going to be able to give them. Don't focus on the powerful uh, one-on-ones you're going to do in hotels for your downlines. Don't focus on, I don't know, don't focus on those ones. Focus on what, how will they survive? How will they do trainings? How will they do OPPs when you're not? There. Because if your team in Kabale can exist while you are not there, it gives you time to do business in Barara. If your team in Barara can exist when you are not there, then you can do business in what? In Arua. And it's only through this, our system that we're using. And then, of course, you know, we've been working very hard to make sure that we also have a powerful training system. As you know, we, uh, um, um, at a point, we said that. Um, the sales in the morning, after doing the script, maybe the journal, the journal training should be about the script. We discuss it. Now, why did we do that? It's because it was also simple. It was also something which we can be able to do. But we realized that it was a bit boring. Then we said no. How about, I remember you designed several PowerPoints and, you know, uh, we called them skills. Skill one, skill two, skill three. Some teams are still, they are still using them, which is beautiful. And then, unfortunately, when it is the same PowerPoint, you know, if it is the same PowerPoint being trained, like the same wording, the same font, the same everything, by the time you train it three times to the same people, it becomes a bit what? Boring. That one failed. So then the other day, um, um, still through, you know, thinking and seeing what can be able to happen and researching, we are able to design what they call the visionized training what? Cycle. A system that if you're down in Kabale, is, is they are trading. They know that today we shall discuss dreams. The first day we shall discuss nameless. The other day we shall discuss new distributor orientation. The other day we shall discuss products. I will get to what I'm telling you. And we didn't want to create PowerPoints because if I gave you, to, I, if I gave Nicholas a chance to probably train on, on, on nameless, what he's going to say is going to be a different perspective from what Sydney says if he provide the same training. Am I right? And also probably different from what Sebogala is going to say, given the same training. So it becomes so powerful. And the question of, after the sale, what, we do, what do we train is now already answered. Let me tell you something. I have very many special trainings. I have many, many ways I can be able to change the, the trainings. But even here at Aruna Towers, I, as long as I'm invited as a speaker, I personally follow the training what? cycle. Why do I do that? Because... Why I can come and organize a special topic that is special, that is very good, I cannot do it every day. So how would Haruna Towers exist when I'm not there around? Are we together? So go to Kenya, go to Mbarara, go to Kavale. Please make sure you promote the visionized training. What? Psycho. Teach them how to use it. Teach them how to do the business while you're not there. You're going to be able to build such a very powerful business. The only missing puzzle that we have been having in the visionized team and that's the reason that's why I'm really, really very 100% sure that the visionary team, in the next six months to one year, we are going to totally explode. We are going to totally expand. We are going to totally triple our incomes. That's one I'm very sure about it.
The reason why I'm so sure about it is that we have now been able to fix the missing link by creating a very simple and duplicable new distributor orientation program. Something people have been asking me, do you have any slide about NDO? Then I'm imagining NDO, I cannot train one day and then I say that's the new distributor orientation. I can, a person cannot join today and you give them one hour training and then you say that person is longer new at distributor. It's a series of trainings. Are we together? Then I already designed uh, three PowerPoints. I said, okay, PowerPoint 1, PowerPoint 2, PowerPoint 3, which is going to be our NDO. I still find a problem with that. Why? Now, if someone joined today, they are new today, what if the next NDO training is next week? Am I going to wait for the whole entire week before I can get NDO? No. The NDO we have been able to design has a very strong relationship between a distributor, rather, sorry, a new distributor and their sponsor. I get what I'm telling you. So that the sponsor can be able to grow now. I also want you to notice as leaders that normally many people have a few legs. The legs that you started with, the ones that you started with, if you notice, they're the ones which still keep on growing. Am I right? Time reaches and becomes very hard for you to work with new people. Like, you find it very hard to bring up a new person the way you brought up your strong leg. Or the way you brought up one of your leaders. Like, it becomes a problem. Now, it's not only a challenge for you, the slivers, but I'm probably sure the global ambassadors are nodding their heads. Why? Because probably with the time, you have a bigger team to look at, you have maybe more closes to do, so it becomes very hard for you to raise up new distributors. It becomes a little bit hard. They, they, they more grow in the what? In the business. I get what I'm telling you. And that's why most people, the people that they started with are the ones who are still growing. Who's your strong leg? So and so, because you started with them. Who's your strong leg? The people you started with. Who's your strong leg? The people you started with. And you're saying, I wish I can get another one who is like Oscar Nyejema. If I can get another leg, who is like this leg? I get what I'm telling you. Do you know why? Ask me why. Ask me why. The people that you started with that time when you didn't have anyone, you are always with them. Training, they're the ones you call. You know, when they have one-on-one, -on -one, you go with them. After all, you are doing nothing. Are we together? Then, um, any small activity, if there's any outreach, you are with them. So it becomes easy for them to be able to grow because you gave them all your time. Now, as new people are joining, this is what we are doing. What happens? You go with them to Mabiliz, they get a code. After getting the code, you sign them in the system, you shake their hand, congratulations on joining. Then you tell them tomorrow at 8 a.m., come to Sleep Arcade for morning sale. They plunge into the cell. But they don't know anything. Oh, I apply and I have a sign up. Sorry, I have an outreach to do. Invite them to Aruna Towers. They tell you, apply, and I have a customer to meet. God meet them alone. Because you think you already have a very big what? Team. I normally encourage us as leaders that for you to be able to grow a very big team, you must keep on behaving like a new what? Distributor. Keep on behaving like a new distributor. If someone is a new distributor, someone tells, excuse me, I have a one-on-one -on -one to do. What does a new distributor do? They go with their downline. A new distributor has a name list. A new distributor comes for new trainings. So if you cannot doing the same things you did with your new distributors when you are new, for your new uh, if you cannot keep on doing the things you did for your new distributors during the time when you started, it becomes hard for you to build a, a, a very large business. Now, what is Eric Quarry saying? This is skill number six, which is chapter nine, we shall read together. He says it starts helping your new distributor getting started right. And we are saying that in network marketing, people invest enormous effort and time and money into getting people signed up. And then they squander that investment by leaving their new distributors figure out everything for themselves. Is that common? That we sponsor people into the business, they join into the business, and then the whole relationship ends after they have joined the business. Am I right? Yet you spent a lot of time. You didn't follow up. You did. You even send them birthday messages. You said, please join. The day they join, you now say, next. That's the problem. They set proper expectations. They help, um, they help their new distributors get some quick results. Then continue to guide the new distributor through the many 
phases of our profession. I was lucky enough to have an elementor, Michael Nelson, who was very skilled at guiding new distributors. Michael wasn't my upline, but he was clearly the leader in my city. In addition, he had a lot of experience in our profession. So I listened to what he said, and I watched what he did, and I asked him some tons of questions. Back in those days, he had a small office close to my home, and I was always hanging out around him, trying to learn something. Michael was a very successful recruiter. Many of us, we are successful recruiters. If you go to your um, personal sponsored people, wow, we can clap for you. How many of us have many people, when you say personal sponsored that section, you, you would probably be a Ruby Globe ambassador. You have like more than five. Put up your hand. <laughs> Some of you would be Ru double Ruby Globe ambassadors. Some of you would be <laughs> Diamond Global what? Ambassadors. So we are very good at sponsoring. We are very good at bringing people. But we are learning today that professionals don't just bring a lot of what? People. It's good to bring people. But you, the relationship between sponsor and new downline begins at a point when they join the business. Many of us, relationship ends on the day they join the business. And what are you doing? You're looking for other people. He was always bringing in on new people. So he was a good sponsor. And for the most part, Michael's people did well in the business. That wasn't happening for me. The few people I recruited did nothing. How many of us have their down ends? And you have recruited them, you put in all our effort, and they, they are doing nothing. Okay. As I watched Michael, I noticed that every time he signed up a new distributor, wow, look at this. He scheduled what he called a game plan interview. I decided to model what he did, means, means um, duplicate. I decided to duplicate what he did. So the next time he, he met with a new distributor, I sat behind them close enough to take notes on their conversation. I did this several times and I was surprised to learn that he went through the same interview. The what? The same interview. The same training. The same everything. You can only be able to duplicate your system if it is the same. That means that if Julio has joined the business, the same training that you take him through is the same training you take uh, Mary through. I thought if I could learn the interview process, that I would have a chance to have his results. Now, I want to assure you that once you learn how to support your new distributor and help them to, to be converted into a leader, you're going to earn crazy, crazy amount of money after I've given you a secret that me, I really have, I only have six. In our company, we only have two Diamond Globe ambassadors, Mr. Joseph Lehman, for and Andres. If you learn how to support your new distributor to move from uh, silver to gold to Globe ambassador, they become leaders. You can actually become the first Diamond Globe ambassador. In, in, in Africa, and you join Fra and Aris and Joseph Lee. Who would want to be part of that stage? So the game plan interview, what were those things he, he took his people through? Number one, he validated the decision to become a distributor. He said something of the sort. Congratulations on making a decision. I'm proud of you for taking charge of your life. From now on, Things are going to be different for, for you and your family. That's what he told them. It is very important that when a person joins the business, you validate their decision. Congratulate them. Make a big deal out of them joining. Congratulations. You're going from today, you're going to become successful. You have taken and made the right decision. This decision you made is going to change your life forever. Congratulations. So I want you to make your downlines feel special. As a silver executive, as a leader to your team, as a CEO of your downlines, make sure that you always get a chance to call the people that join the business. But also, that's only a part of NDO you are validating. But also, of course, you also congratulate the sponsors. My best section when I first started the business was the new recruits. It's a very good section to look at every day. You look at the section... You look at who sponsored and who sponsored them. So you call, hi, James, congratulations on signing up a person directly. 
The lady is called, I've seen the lady is called Paula, congratulations. Then give me Paula's number. So you pick Paula's number and then you call. Hi, Paula, my name is so-and-so. Congratulations on doing one joining. You have hit two birds with one stone. You have recognized James. You have also come to who? Paula. You do it. How many of us are already going to be able to do that? Now, it always took less than five minutes, but by the end of their discussion, any doubt that they may have been about becoming a distributor was gone. They felt great. Much better. If the sponsor can validate them, then even you, the uplines, the chief executive teams are not very big. You also do what? Validate them. Am I right? Part number two, what else did this uh, particular person go through? He set the expectations. Now, the second thing that he did, what does this person of yours expect to do? Are we together? Make it clear from the very beginning. Divide roles right now. What's the role? Duncan did a training for us the other day and he said, role of a distributor and role of what? The upline. Am I right? So when a person is still new, identify their roles, show them their roles, you also identify your what? Your roles. Let me ask you a question. How many of us have signed up a person after joining the business and then they start blaming you for that you brought them into the business and they didn't make money? They are blaming you because they're not making money. Put up your hand. It is simply because you did not do the right new distributor orientation. Otherwise, people, Nicholas every day is thanking me. He says, thank you very much. I cannot go to the restaurant with Sydney and I pay money. He pays for me. So why is it for you someone is blaming you? Same opportunity, same everything. Sydney is thanking me. Nicholas is thanking me. And then you, he set expectations. He knew that most people came into our business with unrealistic expectations. So he always said the same three things. If you succeed in a business, it's going to be you who creates the success, not me. And if you fail in the business, it's going to be you who creates the failure, not me. You are going to be the difference between success and failure. I'm here to guide you every step of the way, but I can't do it for you. I'm here to work with you, but not for you. Wow. This is a radical concept. So different from the conversation I had, when a new person got started my business, I said things like, I get paid from what you produce, so I essentially work for you. That's what the other one said. Well, what kind of expectations do you think that set in the new distributor's mind? Okay. I would also say, if we are going to build business together, and when that was, when that was really true, they needed to build a business. I could be a resource, but I couldn't do it for them. Now, the next thing that this mentor or professional said, he said, my job is to help you to become independent from me as quickly as possible. Do you agree that is a good goal? Again, this was radical. But it made a lot of sense. Up to this point, I had a group that was extremely dependent on me. Some of us, we have teams whereby if you are there, they grow. If you're not there, they don't grow, and you are the cause. You go to Malawi, and instead of being in the OPPs, you know, I don't know, I don't understand when people go to Malawi or some of these countries, or go there on holiday. Am I right? I, now, then afterwards, they, they go back probably to the hotel. They do one-on-ones, one-on-ones, one-on-ones. Now, when they leave Malawi, or they leave that particular country, I'm talking about all these countries, what happens? Their business goes back to sleep. They collected a lot of codes from these markets, from Arua, from Guru, from everywhere. Unfortunately, they have gone, number one, Nicholas told you to privilege testimonies, you have gone with testimonies, you have gone with everything, you have, you, you will do it super close, people are like, wow, this Ugandan is very serious. They join, they join, they join, they join, they join. Unfortunately, when you leave, they cannot do a super close, they cannot do a super training, they cannot do a super OPP. Can that team exist when you are leave? When you leave, can it exist? No. They only did something when I pushed. But Michael had a group that produced on their own without constant hope. Duplication and freedom, and I didn't. This set the relationship up so Michael would be the teacher for his group and not a slave. He could show them the skills and they could independently build from that point forward. I expect when you go to, 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 to Chisoro, when you go to Kabale, when you are here at Aruna Towers, wherever you are, Make sure that whatever you're doing, your people can exist without you.
I, I, let me tell you something. I just, if it were possible, uh, if it wasn't about duplication, I would not even have sales. I could get, you know, I would train every day. And I'm thinking that if I train every day, people can join. Am I right? But no. Sales is the best way you can duplicate. The training cycle is the best way you can duplicate. The same thing over and over and over again. Are you using it at Silvercade? You're using it, following it seriously? Perfect. If it says product, follow product. If it says recognition, do the recognition. Because you want to go to the beach. How many of us want to retire very young and rich? Nicholas asked you that question. Yes, when you retire very young and rich, business will keep on happening. Am I right? So what will keep the business happening? It's the system that you have been about to say. I told you that the first two years of my business, 2015 and 2016, were probably the, 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 the time when I worked the most. Because I had to be there. I was there for every trading. I was there for every sale. I was there to tell people I'm, I would be the timekeeper to make sure that if we say that OPP is one hour, it must be one hour. Sometimes I was not very popular for that. But it was very, very helpful for us to be able to set the system. To supervise and make sure that when you go to some of these markets, when I probably go travel out of the country, I'm interested in visiting the sales to see are they doing the sales. To see how do they do the general training. To see how do they do the close. How do they do the OPPs. I want to observe. Of course, I close the meetings most of the times. I get what I'm telling you. But I follow their system. If they start at 9, I'm not going to say, now I'm a big one, I'm a big fish, I've come. Let us now start at 8. Let them continue with what they are doing. But support them to make sure that they, whatever they are doing is duplicable. Okay. The third thing that he said, there will certainly be ups and downs as you build your business. There will be good times, there will also be bad times. And I know, and I will know you are in the bad times when you aren't calling me. When you aren't showing up for meetings. When you aren't on phone calls, if I start hearing excuses, that sort of thing, when that happens with you, and it happens with everyone, how do you want me to handle that? Do you want me to leave you alone? Or do you want me to persist and remind you why you made the decision to get started in the very first place? So you're showing them that there will be good times, there will be bad times, and I want you to know. Let me ask you, when do you give me permission to push you? Do you give me permission to coach you? Do you give me permission to wake you up, to shake you up? I get what I'm telling you. He set those three expectations. And the same all the time. This was brilliant because it is true that everyone will have doubts sometimes. Let them know that it is natural. At the same time, set up a relationship so that he, you are in position, so that he was in position to turn them around when this happens. What Michael accomplished with these three um, concepts was different from promising the world like I was doing. So some of you, when you sponsor people, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. You join the business. You only bring two people, one on the left, one on the right. How many people? Only two people, one on the left, one on the right. Only, yes, sir, only. Then they do it. No problem for, their, for them. They get their mother. Mommy, I put for you money. You are now a member of Alliance. Then they get their daughter. Daughter, don't. I love you, daughter. Put you by the joint alliance. He has brought his two people, and that is all. Then they start saying, Jim, my money. Jim, I'm not saying anything. Jim, I cannot say anything. Jim. So, he says that I became the excuse for why things were not working out. Can you imagine someone's blaming you? Mary wanted to much into. Now this thing is not working. Why did you bring me Fred? This thing is not working. I get what I'm telling you. They are blaming you for showing them an opportunity that I showed Duncan and la Duncan last year made two billion. I, and you and the person is blaming you. Wow. Are we together? With Michael's approach, his people became independent quickly. He would coach them from time to time. He wouldn't allow this, his group to use him as an excuse for lack of results. This is why my distributor struggled and he's flourished. The difference between you becoming a top leader and you becoming a mediocre, you stay somewhere down, is the NDO. Professionals, make sure the people they bring. 
I was in Kenya at a point and I showed them uh, how many people, you know, I, they provoked me and they showed them how many people I had personally brought into the business. And I thought as God motivates them, okay, personal recruits, shh, showed them. Then one of the ladies, I think her name is Anne, she said, only, <laughs> you know, she looked at me like, Moses, you have only brought those ones, only. Like, it, for her, it was very few. I get what I'm telling because many people are brought, many people, they bring people, they bring people, they sponsor, they are good at recruiting, oh God, like Aisha knows them at Mabilizi. By the time, by the time they reach, probably Aisha already says that one, She's already, she knows there are seven accounts. I get what I'm telling you, but you are not very successful. Yet people who probably bring in less people are more successful. The difference is because for them, their ability to turn this new distributor into a, a, a serious leader is high. You, your ability to turn a new distributor into a serious leader is low. The difference is the NDO. Are we together? Game plan interview number three, part three. Michael went through a getting started checklist to help the new person have the best chance for success. So now, part three is the checklist. The exact plan would be different from every company, of course, definitely. But the concept was to do with everything to get quick results as quickly as possible. The quicker your new person gets results, the better for you. And results doesn't mean they're earning millions of money similar to those of Nicholas is earning. The, the, the success signing up a person. The success selling a product. The success is getting a new person who promises to join them. The success is them seeing their points re uh, remove away from 10 to 9.8 because they bought a C247 and they redeemed it. That is success. So the quicker someone sees a difference, so that every day they don't open, hello Derek, congratulations, you're welcome, you're a new distributor, you're 10 points away to become silver executive. First week. Hello, Derek, your new distributor, you're, you're 10 points away from becoming self executive next week. Hello, Derek, your new distributor, you're 10 points away from becoming gold executive three months. Eee -ee. So the quicker they see a, a small change, the better. Okay, here are examples of what um, you could include in the getting started checklist. Number one, make sure the new distributor is set up with appropriate products, which I want to thank our company, M Global. Normally, they give them products. Are we together? And the products which they give you, of course, you see they have household products. They have oh, um, 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 uh, um, several of them anyway. Uh, in, but M Global of all countries, they give. Just about every company has products that can be personally used by the distributor. So make sure the unit distributor is doing that. Depending on your company, this may include a monthly commitment. Ours doesn't have. Oh, yes, it has. It is very important that the person develops an emotional attachment to the products and that, and in, that can only happen if they're using their products and enjoying the benefits. The key word is emotional attachment. Let a person fall in love with the products like on their very first day. Let them go home anxious like running. They ask them, excuse me, why are you running home? I'm running to use M Global products. I get what I'm telling you. Like, let them be so excited. Let them really love the products. Let them already start giving testimonies. You know, I've been able to maintain many distributors who are not yet making money, and they, they are giving testimonies. You know, I joined this company, and honestly, one of the things I love about this company are good products. Some of us have had down like those ones, especially the senior citizens. And the one thing that's keeping them in the business is the press are doing what are working. They love the coffee. So some of us, this is what we do. Stephen, a person has joined the business, and then do you know what we do? We get the products and then send them on a border border. What do we border with later? Are we together? We send them on a border border. Excuse me, madam. But the border border person is going to call you. Ah. And then the winner. Those of us who have business in international markets, the reason as to why your retention ratio is low, it's because they, first of all, first of all, they have delayed, then they reach there, and then they, 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 someone is just dumping them on them, 
You don't make a phone, a phone call like, you know, we now, nowadays we have online systems. You have no excuse of not keeping in touch with the international markets. You can Zoom. I'm sure there's Zoom. You can also do uh, IMO. That is uh, like some app that does videos. It's called IMO. Okay, then you can also do WhatsApp video call. You can do Skype. Like there's so many things you can be able to do. Just to take this person through, giving them a chance to get emotional attachment. But you, you say, excuse me, uh, downline, I've sent your products on a border border. He's bringing them. Then they, they okay, they, no problem. They go, they open, they open C24-7. And of course, you know how we have people fear medicine. They open the, the capsule. is big. It is green. They're like, oh, this one. They put it away. And then they open college use. They see the capsule. It is big and golden. They're like, okay. I get what I'm telling you. Because people have that phobia about, about, you know, medicines. They're going to think this is medicine. Yet these are beautiful, healthy food supplements. Edify them. That's why people use coffee. You have a lot of downlines who use coffee, 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 coffee. My choco, my choco, my choco. But they are not using the supplements because you did not help them create an emotional attachment to the product. In addition, many companies have products that are sampled, like the ones we have, or use the demonstration. In that case, the new distributor should have an appropriate supply so they can properly be prepared. Number two, we shall proceed. Make sure the new distributor is set up with appropriate tools. We've talked about the importance of the third-party tools in building a large, successful network marketing business. Your new distributor needs to be prepared, uh, needs to be prepared to help their prospects with the tools that professionally take them through the exposure process. Number three, we're going to checklist. What does your new person need to have, all right? Make sure your new distributor gets connected. Show them how to find things on the company website, where upcoming events are held, and the leadership calls and webinars that are being conducted. Some of you are doing international business. Remember, our goal is to help this person become as independent as quickly. This is an important step in making that goal a reality. Have you looked at your dashboard? And then, um, this, the circles, those circles that show where your team is. Am I right? So some circles are in Kenya. Congratulations, you have a team in Kenya. Some circles are in, in Uganda. You have a team in Uganda. Some circles are in Tanzania. You have a team in Tanzania. Some circles are in South Africa. You have a team in South Africa. But there's that circle that is in the Antarctic Ocean. Have you seen that one? That's not an island. <laughs> that represents people who have joined the business, but they have not put an address in their dashboard. In fact, have you seen those ones who say, unknown location? Don't say probably these guys are from Mars. Maybe some aliens are joining my business. <laughs> now, I want you to imagine there are people who join the business. And, and they have never, ever, ever logged in because this, this is what you do, Muhozi. This is what people do. I'm reporting you to Muhozi. He doesn't do it. They say, hi, Robert, congratulations, joining the business. Here is your username. Your username is, uh, oh, Robert. You know, we crammed that one. Your username is, oh, Robert, password 12456, happy networking. I want you to remember your very first day. Someone sends you a message that, excuse me, Clint, your username is C. Muhozi. Password 13456. How do you even log in? There are people who call me, applying, I have a problem. There's a problem with the system. Then, like, you know, I'm like, I'm fumbling, I'm wondering what's the problem with the system. I cannot see encashment. I cannot see encashment. Kumbe, they have not updated their address. How does that person become independent? How are they going to encode people? How are they going to buy products and redeem them from e store? How is this person going? You know what I'm talking about? Am I making some sense? Make sure your new distributor has the basic understanding of a compensation plan. They don't need to know all the details at the beginning, but they should at least understand the key points that will happen financially as they move up through the levels. Is it a good point or a good point? Checklist number five. Make sure that your new distributor has a fundamental understanding of how to properly, properly invite their 
prospects to understand more about what they have to offer. You can save them from running out there and talking their heads off with little or no results by giving them a brief overview of how and why a professional invitation process works. Now, when you sign up a person and then you tell them, congratulations, Lucy, you have just joined the business, your cell, dream achiever, sits around that, 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 what they call it, that fund there. They come in and you expect them to learn naturally. You know how like a person has to learn naturally how to invite prospects? Most people figure out how to properly invite probably by the end of the year. And what has happened by the end of the year? They are tired. The person must be equipped with somehow how they can invite their brother. How can they talk to their sister? How can they talk, how they can talk to their, I don't know, uh, workmates? I get what I'm telling you. That simple one. Then they will learn how to invite cold market, how to do international business, how to invite a South African, probably later on in the training. But they need the basic understanding of how to present the business and how to do it. How to, to, to invite their home market. Anyway. That is also covered in our NDO program. Game plan number four. Uh, let us proceed. Michael helped their new distributor create a game plan to get through the first ranks and challenge them to do it quickly. You see how to quickly become self-executive, how to redeem products and all that. We need that. He understood and helped them understand that it is a race to help a person get results quickly. The quicker your person gets results, not billions of money, but the simple ones, my first customer, my first downline, my first sign up, my first redeeming, my first point reduced, that is very, very important. If they received any positive reinforcement, they would continue. You see, if they received any, any small result, they would continue. And if they didn't, they had a tendency to fade away. When people don't have some results in the very beginning, in the first months, in the first few weeks, they, they are going to be able to do what? To go away. Unless you sign up someone like who? Like Sydney. For him, he cannot quit. Every company is different. So this game plan will also be different. But think about the simple actions you could encourage people to take during their first week um, to get the best results. How can they get their first customer? How can they get their... First this with how can you encourage them to attend their first company event? Wonderful. What steps can um, you can take them to help um, them earn their first commission? And that's the reason as why I told you that the first time I joined the business, um, my upline, very special guy, he made sure that of course I get signed up. I like learn how to log in. He made sure that my account is linked to the system. Very very important. And the moment I brought my first person, Julie, like this. And my 50000 I cashed it and went to my bank account. I was like, wow, this company pays. Some of us, your new person joined the business and you don't care for them to get their first check, their first earning, to make them feel excited. In fact, you tell them, I encourage you down there, keep them under the system. What are you encashing? You encash when it is 10 million. Oh, Papa Chi, have you seen that kind of scenario? No, it's not fair. Okay, they're saying, success network marketing wasn't true for me until I earned my first paycheck. When it arrived, everything changed for me. I started to really dream about, become, about creating a better life for myself and my family. Helping a new person get off a quick start is very, 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 very vital. Okay, game plan number five. Michael always ended up, ended by giving some specific assignments. Wow, you give assignments. I like this. One thing I've, I've learned is the new distributors crave direction. They respond incredibly well to simple assignments. Michael always ended up by giving those assignments along with, uh, with the deadline for them to be completed. He told his new distributor to get back to him by a specific date. It's just like the exposure uh, prospecting process. You go from one exposure to another, but it doesn't end when they really become distributors. The professionals continue to go through the exposure process, assignment after assignment. The purpose of all this is to help this new person over the line. 
When someone gets started, there will always be a line between success and failure. One side of the line, it is, it's easier to quit than to continue. The other side of the line, it's easier to continue than to do what? To quit. So help them get started as quickly as possible. What can help um, a person get over the line? Signing out their new customer, very important. Signing their first distributor, very important. Get their first commission check, very important. Attend their first event, very important. Making friends inside the organization, very important. Claim, proclaiming intentions, the world, very important. Getting promoted to a new level, very important. Being recognized for some sort of achievement. Am I going to repeat that one? Being recognized for some sort of what? Of achievement. When your new person does something, call your uplines. Or when your uplines, when, when your downlines call you, very important. But call your uplines, tell them, hi, my new downline, Judio, has signed up his first person. Wow. So I'm going, hi, Judio, congratulations. Yali has just told me I've signed up a new person. Ah, he's going to feel nice. Are you together? Hi, Judio, Jali has just told me you have just uh, done what? Bought your first product. Congratulations. Hi, Judio, Jali has just told me that you have reduced your points from 10 to 9.8. Congratulations. I get what I'm telling you. Like, that kind of thing. Are you get what I'm telling you? Now, make sure that your person is recognized. Make sure that your new person is recognized on the group. Our first group. I don't know. All those groups. Dream achievers. You know? All those groups. Make sure that this person is really done what? Recognized. And more importantly, I hope that all the trading centers are doing the way we are doing at Haruna Towers. We are following the cycle the way it is. Every training begins with recognition. Come on. I signed up my first person. Can you imagine my first person, Nicholas? Imagine. And then I come to the training. For me, it's a big deal. It has taken me one month to get my first person. And then it's training as usual. The MC comes to the stage, hello everyone, Pawe Grabe, we are going to start have a serious training. And Mary is there. But now, can't you see call me? I signed up my new person. <laughs> I've told you that 99.9% .9 of the money that we earn is team leadership, team development. Those small things that they, you do to make people feel nice. I normally see uh, fights between upline and downline, and I just don't understand. Why can't you let your downline be, have what they want, and you keep the peace, keep the relationship? <laughs> Are you getting what I'm telling you? Why can't you do that? It's because, because it's about the team, guys. It's about the team. Love them, recognize them, know their names, do everything that you can. Make sure they're happy. Why do you think companies pay crazy monies, like big monies, they're paying human resource managers? Why do you think universities are spending, uh, have a course called human resource management? Because people at work are supposed to feel nice. You are supposed to make your downlines, your new people in the business. It's your workforce of sorts, am I right? To make sure they are happy, to make sure they get everything, to make sure they get communication, make sure they get their products, products on time, to make sure they get their usernames and password on time, to make sure they get their engagement on time, to make sure their questions and queries are answered on time. People send me messages, I applied, I misspelled my name, can you help me talk to the company? Immediately, apply and misspelled my username and password. Immediately. You do those things for them as quickly as possible so that your people are happy. Practice that. How many of us are going to practice that? It's urgent. Okay, there are hundreds of other things that can contribute to the person's getting over the line. As a sponsor, your job is to help them get over the line and stay over the line. Get over the line and stay over the line. Very, very important. And this line never really goes away. It will always be there. As, um, as a leader, you need to constantly uh, to be constantly aware of, this, of, of where your people are all emotionally. Very important. Get to know where your people are emotionally. Um, this way you can continue to encourage them never to let go of their what? Of their dreams. Is this a very important script? 